If you want to know what's really driving this, there's two things. It's called the clock and the calendar. The clock and the calendar. Most people in life, if you want to know what they truly value, you look at their, you look at their uh, checkbook and their calendar. You know what they value. That's what this committee values. Time. They want to do it before the end of the year. Why? Because the chairman said it just a second ago. Because we're scared of the elections next year. We're scared of the elections that we'll lose again. So we've got to do this now. The clock and the calendar are what's driving impeachment, not the facts. When we understand this, that's what the witnesses here will say today. What do we have here today? What is really interesting over the today and for the next few weeks is America will see why most people don't go to law school. No offense to our professors. But please, really, we're bringing you in here today to testify on stuff that most of you have already written about, all four, for the opinions that we already know, out of the classrooms that maybe you're getting ready for finals in, to discuss things that you probably haven't even had a chance to say, unless you're really good on TV of watching the hearings for the last couple of weeks, you couldn't have possibly actually digested the Adam Schiff report from yesterday or the Republican response in any real way. Now, we can be theoretical all we want, but the American people is really going to look at this and say, huh? What are we doing? Thank you so much for the opportunity to testify. Twice I have had the privilege of representing this committee uh, and its leadership in voting rights cases before the Supreme Court. Once when it was under the leadership of <coughs> Chairman Sensenbrenner, and it's good to see you again, sir, uh, and with Mr. Shabat as one of my other clients, uh, and once under the leadership of Chairman Conyers. It was a great honor for me to represent this committee because of this committee's key role over the past 50 years in ensuring that American citizens have the right to vote in free and fair elections. Today, you're being asked to consider whether protecting those elections requires impeaching a president. That is an awesome responsibility. But everything I know about our Constitution and its values, and my review of the evidentiary record, and here, Mr. Collins, I would like to say to you, sir, that I read transcripts of every one of the witnesses who appeared in the live hearing because I would not speak about these things without reviewing the facts. So I'm insulted by the suggestion that as a law professor I don't care about those facts. But everything I read on those occasions tells me that when President Trump invited, indeed demanded foreign involvement in our upcoming election, he struck at the very heart of what makes this a republic to which we pledge allegiance. That demand, as Professor Feldman just explained, constituted an abuse of power. Indeed, as I want to explain in my testimony, drawing a foreign government into our elections is an especially abu uh, serious abuse of power because it undermines democracy itself. Our Constitution begins with the words, we the people for a reason. Our government, in James Madison's words, derives all its powers directly or indirectly from the great body of the people. And the way it derives these powers is through elections. Elections matter, both to the legitimacy of our government and to all of our individual freedoms, because as the Supreme Court declared more than a century ago, voting is preservative of all rights. So it is hardly surprising that the Constitution is marbled with provisions governing elections and guaranteeing governmental accountability. Indeed, a majority of the amendments to our Constitution since the Civil War have dealt with voting or with terms of office. And among the most important provisions of our original Constitution is the guarantee of periodic elections for the presidency, one every four years. America has kept that promise for more than two centuries, and it has done so even during wartime. For example, we invented the idea of absentee voting so that Union troops who supported President Lincoln could stay in the field during the election of 1864. And since then, countless other Americans have fought and died to protect our right to vote. But the framers of our Constitution realized that elections alone could not guarantee that the United States would remain a republic. One of the key reasons for including the impeachment power was a risk that unscrupulous officials might try to rig the election process. Uh, now, you've already heard two people give William Davey his props. Um, you know, Hamilton got a whole musical, and William Davey is just going to get this committee hearing. But he warned that unless the Constitution contained an impeachment provision, a president might spare no efforts or means whatsoever to get himself reelected. 
And George Mason insisted that a president who procured his appointment in the first instance through improper and corrupt acts should not escape punishment by repeating his guilt. And Mason was the person responsible for adding high crimes and misdemeanors to the list of impeachable offenses. So we know from that that the list was designed to reach a president who acts to subvert an election whether that election is the one that brought him into office or it's an upcoming election where he seeks an additional term. Moreover, the founding generation, like every generation of Americans since, was especially concerned to protect our government and our democratic process from outside interference. For example, John Adams, during the ratification, expressed concern with the very idea of having an elected president, writing to Thomas Jefferson that, you are apprehensive of foreign interference, intrigue, influence. So am I. But as often as elections happen, the danger of foreign influence recurs. And in his farewell address, President Washington warned that history and experience prove that foreign influence is one of the most baneful foes of Republican government. And he explained that this was in part because foreign governments would try and foment disagreement among the American people and influence what we thought. The very idea that a president might seek the aid of a foreign government in his re-election campaign would have horrified them. But based on the evidentiary record, that is what President Trump has done. The list of impeachable offenses that the framers included in the Constitution shows that the essence of an impeachable offense is a president's decision to sacrifice the national interest for his own private ends. Treason, the first thing listed, lay in an individual's giving aid to a foreign enemy. That is, putting a foreign enemy's adversary's interests above the interests of the United States. Bribery occurred when an official solicited, received, or offered a personal favor or benefit to influence official action, risking that he would put his private welfare above the national interest. And high crimes and misdemeanors captured the other ways in which a high official might as Justice Joseph's story explained, disregard public interests in the discharge of the duties of political office. Based on the evidentiary record before you, what has happened in the case today is something that I do not think we have ever seen before. A president who has doubled down on violating his oath to faithfully execute the laws and to protect and defend the Constitution. The evidence reveals a president who used the powers of his office to demand that a foreign government participate in undermining a competing candidate for the presidency. As President John Kennedy declared, the right to vote in a free American election is the most powerful and precious right in the world. But our elections become less free when they are distorted by foreign interference. What happened in 2016 was bad enough there is widespread agreement that Russian operatives intervened to manipulate our political process. But that distortion is magnified if a sitting president abuses the powers of his office actually to invite foreign intervention. 